Wow. That's completely new. You know who sits usually there. So people from that leg group, so, so just to be clear, we have the, the open press conference um, and then we have the day pass, which all content embargoed until 10.30pm tonight with our colleagues in the national press. Peter? Oh, sorry. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Um, just wondered if you could give us your thoughts on, on getting to that landmark and maybe the biggest lesson you've learned in it. <laughs> oh, yeah, so the first thing I never would have thought, I never thought about these kind of numbers and never would have thought that um, I would be allowed to do it for that long. Um, but somehow it went, went really quick. And that's obviously the thing. You have to work pretty much through 22 years, and then you can somehow um, arrive there. Otherwise, with a few other the clubs would have sacked me a bit earlier than a year on break. Then you need, then I'm sitting here and I'm 60, and then I have maybe 1,000. So it's a massive thing. I'm really feel really blessed. I have um, obviously three fantastic clubs. Uh, which gave me the opportunity to do the job. So that's that's what's going through my mind. It's not. I don't think I learned. I, I, I learned a lot, obviously, but um, I wouldn't know what what was the most important thing I, I've learned. Um, but it's uh, when, when this week people told me because I forgot it um, that it will happen. Um, then I really start. Then it come pictures just coming up and the star that mines. Uh, the start of Dortmund, the start here, all these kind of things coming up, and when you when you come in somewhere, you never know how it will go. And I was really lucky with all the things that happened, um, and so that's it's a it's a it's a crazy number, honestly, one thousand. But um, the beer is now beer is now really grey. It was not the case when I arrived here. I'm not sure that's because of the age or because of Liverpool, <laughs> um, but it's fine. I, in the best time of my, in, in the time when I probably was full of power and still am, um, I did the job I, I loved for the clubs I love. So, um, absolutely, I, I'm really, I'm blessed with that, 100%. That's what I feel. I'm frustrating at times, but I <laughs> still enjoy it. Absolutely. Absolutely, it's a, it's part of the deal that you have, and when you do a thousand games, uh, it would be interesting. Maybe people should get an honor for a thousand good games, so that would take much longer. I'm not sure anybody would uh, could get old enough for that. Um, so they were not all good, and not all the paces were good, but most of the time it went in the right direction. And what you learn in these times, um, you know, football problems you solve with football, um, and there's a way out of each situation. In football, that's how it is. So that gives you. I didn't know that 22 years ago. Meanwhile, I know that I learned it the hard way, and that's all fine. Um, I, it's not. It is the best for me, the best job in the world. It's not a relaxing job. It's not a job where you um, <laughs> um, have a lot of holiday or whatever. Especially up here, not. Um, but I love it, and I feel really blessed that I can do it because it's actually the only thing I really can do. So. Um, Nobody would ask me any kind of question if I could would not be in football. So um, not that I, I would miss that, but just to say that would be very a very calm life, and um, I'm absolutely fine with the excitement, the pressure, the the outstanding moments, and the lesser good moments. Um, I'm absolutely fine. It's part of the deal. Nobody wins all the time, um, and I knew that early. And so I don't expect it, but I still try to do it as often as some are possible. And in terms of the game tomorrow, you look at the week's table, it looks very strange. Nines against tens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true. When I saw it, when we did the analyze meeting, and you could get a list from the other team and then so see injuries, I think it's the only team with a similar injury list like ours. Um, yeah, it's tough. That's uh, the biggest problem. You can just go through it, and without now, time, uh, honestly, Arsenal deserves where they are in the moment. Huh? Play outstanding football, top, top, top. But cut out five players or three of their offensive players. So, and nobody, 
would think, oh, I'll wear you. So that's how it is. Um, the injuries are a massive problem, and Chelsea has them as much as we have. It's not the only problem, but it's a big problem. And so that's why I'm not surprised that they do not translate well. But then you look at the, at the games they played, and, and they lost quite a few in the last few weeks. But against teams in form, I would say, they played twice City, they played for sure, for sure Newcastle. So it was not now where you think, OK, they should give them 6-0 and send them home. So um, it was a tough period because when you watch Chelsea, there's still a lot of good football uh, in a game. It's a bit of a situation. Don't say they played now particularly well in the last uh, weeks. But when you don't use your own chances and your opponent used the first, that's a good sign for a bad period. <laughs> Um, and that happens a little bit more often. So we, I, I said, don't sit here and think, OK, thank God Chelsea's coming. They have even bigger problems than us. No, no, I know how good they are um, and can be. Um, and will be the next tough game. It's half time of the season as, as, we, as we get to this game. You've got FA Cup, you've got Champions League, you've got that 10 point gap to close. What, what do you need? What do you demand now from your team in the second? Again, consistency in, on, uh, in a good way, um, so that we we have to, yeah, consistently up to it. That we have to we have to defend on incredibly high level, but what we didn't do often enough. Um, and based on that, we will create chances. There's no doubt about that. Will we create an immediately twenty a game? Probably not. But um, that is not that's not the, the main issue. We have to we have to. Um, the, so the, the game against Wolves, I know, was a very good example. So everybody felt in the game, winning or not. So of course, at the end was a bit hectic again, and maybe they could have. There was not a big chance, but if they score a goal there and go to extra time, and I wouldn't have fancied that, to be honest, um, after such an intense game. But a lot of things were what we have to do. Uh, look like like the things we have to do, and uh, that means we have to defend together, everybody. And that's why I said, and that means defending you cannot do. By moving a little bit here, or there, that that's intense. Never was never different. Will never be different. Nothing with style or whatever. You can have the deep, the deepest defending on the pitch if you're all together. That's intense, um, and we we have to show that we are ready for that all the time, um, and that's what we try. Um, and it was a really nice sign. This was it was a really nice sign. It's possible after two days, after a real a real low point. Um, Going there, making eight changes, and be really together. Be really together. Go there, and we played good football stuff. A lot of moments, much better than before. Didn't end always in a in a chance or whatever. But how we worked together, how we played together, how the distances were. So many good football things. Were like for a coach, when you sit later there and watch it again, you think, okay, that's different. That's different. That's what we try to build on now. Oh, I was blessed that time because I, uh, my English was not good enough, so I pretty much what you what you said I didn't understand. Most of the things didn't read too much. Um, that's probably Grant's problem that he's English, <laughs> and um, I I tried to get used to all the stuff, what I really had to do, and was not worried about anything else. So it's if the if the owners are not happy, they will tell you early enough. So why should you worry about that? I didn't think about these kind of things. I just was working. Um, and try to sort the situation. And I, I, I know that Graham will do that. Um, it's, a, it's a massive task to work for a big club, um, but in a, in, a, in, a, in a best possible way, you you ignore the size of the club. It's like not just not thinking about it or whatever. It, it, that happens later when you. I have realized when you how big Liverpool is. What you realize when you go abroad, and because you think, oh my God, here they are all crazy as well. So these kind of things. Um, so, yeah, but there's no advice I can give or whatever that he doesn't need at all. So he's a fantastic coach and um, showed that over for years and years. Um, but with the amount of injuries, that's difficult. Right? It's difficult. And, um, yeah.
that's all. I have. I don't think you can compare any kind of situations when you come to a new club or anything. Is it the same like this? Um, I think Liverpool was not in a, in a top place. Like um, we, 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 there was, uh, it was not so difficult to improve. <laughs> Let me say it like this. Um, but I think for Graham that was more 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 difficult because I think Thomas. Uh, did a pretty good job. It was not the best moment, maybe, but did a pretty good job. And um, that's then always when when then people start to compare. That's then not cool. But I never get through this. Hopefully not tomorrow, but then for sure. Is it that, that single mindedness, that focus, is that almost the most important thing that you need to keep in mind at, at that particular stage? Yeah, that's pretty much in life like this. It's not only in football like this. Imagine in a world where everything is like. So 20 years ago, 22 years ago, when I became a manager, I, we, we had probably smartphones. Yeah, we, we, did we have already smartphones? I don't know. When was uh, when when you got all these kind of no, oh why, well, great times. Huh? So um, means much much more uh, less much less information stuff like this. Um, I I analyzed football games on uh, on with a. Um, Video recorder, DVD, a little bit later, all these kind of things. That's how it started. So, um, and the thing when you wanted to know about what the outside world is telling you, you have to ask somebody or you have to read a newspaper. So, and not so good times. I, it's easy not to open a newspaper, and if you don't ask anybody, nobody can tell you. So easy. So I was always like this. I never had a problem with that. I'm interested in opinions. I'm interested in in, in criticism as well, but from people. They really care. They really are in it as well. So my everybody in this building can tell me pretty much everything. Do you really think you do that right? This right? One hundred percent. Because we are all the same. We are all in the same boat. We all going to pull in the same direction. But sorry to say, but from all of you, I couldn't care less. I, if you sit here or in front of Pep Guardiola, this is not a massive difference for you. So same problem, same question, done. There is no same problem. So Pep cannot have the same problem like me or whatever. So why should I really be concerned about what you're saying? There's just no reason for it. But you influence, of course, the outside world. And that's nowadays, and now we come back to social media. Oh, my God, all these people without any kind of knowledge are allowed to. And when I was in that time, the people had to write a letter to the newspaper. Can you imagine this process? You're not happy with something, so take a paper, then realize you cannot write. Properly, uh, that's the first uh, challenge, and then you still do it and send it to the newspaper until they print it. I don't know how long it took. Sometimes you read it and you thought, "When was that?" So, and now it's a second. I really think the best advice from a 55-year-old perspective: ignore the outside world as long as they are not with you, because they have no clue about your situation. Why would you ask them? Yes. <coughs> and in terms of the players who did come in the day for Wolves, has that given you a bit of a, a nice headache for, for selection and uh, for the day? Yeah. I never had one time a headache without selection in the in, in I don't know since when, ages. So I'm, and it's now quarter to two, training at four meetings, stuff like this before I get all the information later. So let me see if I will have a headache or I get. Uh, some informations which will <laughs> give me another headache. So um, no, I'm I'm completely fine. I hope they are all fit and all ready, and then we will find a good team. And one player who was really good during that was was Stefan Stefan Gustafsson. Is he someone you're getting closer to? Yes. Getting into your thoughts for a starting place. He was always. He's he's for a while already. He was injured. Uh, two for two games, two games I think. Um, here's my thoughts: Is you cannot get, be, you cannot be closer to a team than be always in a squad coming on stuff like this. He was only not in a squad for twice, I think, because he was injured. But it was not nothing serious, but painful. It was out. Now he played, and yes, he's closer. But he's ready to, to, to be that kind of player rather than somebody you have to be slightly careful with in terms of his, of his development. It doesn't look like you have to be careful now. Yeah, we will we'll get probably even um, worse uh, or better. I don't know exactly how you want to say it. Yeah, interesting. I have, I cannot explain it. I have no idea. So, um, but if the numbers are somehow true, then it's impressive. Last one to Jan, then we get Nick and Paul. 
actually I was the same age as the twelve inch Christmas question live thing which I do a lecture on. So I was uh, <laughs> I was wondering if you sit here now and if you want to give some advice to the Jurgen Klopp that took over my Fluid Circus in two thousand and one, what would you tell him what to avoid, what to look forward to? From this standpoint today, I could have said because uh, uh, the, 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 the easiest thing would have been don't worry, it will be fine. Um, I didn't know that at that time. I want to do the job for the rest of my life. Um, and how this job is when you, I think from the first seven games, if I'm 100, I don't know exactly, but I think we won six. We would have, we would have lost one more. We would have got relegated. So you win five from the first seven, that would be an outstanding number, and nobody would have recognized it. You just go down to the third league that time, to League One, you know, it would have been in England. Um, and a pretty promising coaching career would have been finished before it's really started. So um, so I was lucky that that didn't happen. Um, and about all the rest, the problems I had that time are completely different to the, to the, to the situation I have today. Um, the job I do today is a completely different job to do that. The advice would have been, but I was, be open, work, work hard, um, be curious, nosy, look around the corners and try to find solutions for problems you don't have in the moment, but you will have in the future. So these kind of things. But the most important thing, be busy, learn the game. I had an interview now a second ago with, with a colleague of you, and uh, it's like the same with, co with coaching. It's a bit the same like with golf. Um, when you think you got it, um, the game will tell you differently. So you have to complete. You, know, you have always to develop, and that's what I like the most about it. It was not for one second boring. Obviously, that's the best thing you can say about your working life. <laughs> not one second boring, and. Um, the best thing I can can imagine to do. So that's that's how it is. Pass on to the section if you want to talk about. Hey Jurgen, um, so tomorrow we should obviously see the Ukrainian international um, Ayo Mudrik uh, start. Do you know much about him? What, what, what do you expect? Good player. <laughs> He's a really good player. The wingers obviously played um, an incredible Champions League campaign with his former club. So um, speed, technique, goals. Yeah, combines a lot. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> having him on one wing and, for example, Shaw Felix on the other, <laughs> um, interesting. So, Chelsea obviously <laughs> sorts the problems differently to us. So, let's see. But, um, yeah, I, I, so Shaw Felix played after two days, after three days when he arrived, right? Pretty much immediately, two days. Yeah, he arrived and played then, so we probably can expect him to play. That makes analysis a little bit more difficult, but we know him. We, we watch Champions League. I cannot say I watch a lot of games in the Ukrainian league, but I watch, we watch Champions League, and that there was impressive enough. So just one follow up as well. How hard is it to prepare for this sort of game when they've got so many incoming, so many suspended, so many changes, and so many injuries? How hard is it to prepare? Yeah, but there was a specific way to play. So it's uh, uh, Graham Potter likes to play in a specific way and that's still clear. So and that's what we prepare for. But there's in other things and in independent other things in football are, will always be independent of what the opponent will do. Not everything, but uh, some things are and that's what we what is actually the most important part for us uh, in this specific case because we have to we have to um how is that we go for consistency. And that means we I think everybody who saw the game thought, ah okay that looks a little bit at least like Liverpool. So we had the challenges at the right moments. We won them. We played out of that. We didn't lose the balls immediately. These kind of things. And as, as good as the opponent is, and they are really good, um, we have to sort our problems and cause them problems, and then we will see. Move on to Ambargo. 